Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be going over the SEMrush Backlink Analytics tool. I think you're really going to like this, especially if you want some great backlink opportunities where you can put in your competitors, see what they have and go from there. I'm going to walk you through the steps and kind of my thought process when it comes to looking for any type of backlinks. If you'd like to follow along, I will put a link in the description. SEMrush does come with a free trial. So let's get started. In this example, I'm going to be using Diggity Marketing, which is owned by Matt Diggity. In my opinion, he's probably one of the best SEOs that I know of. He's great. He's very knowledgeable. He's been doing it for a long time, and he has a fantastic course as well. I will leave that in the description in case you want to check that out. So let's click on Analyze. All right, so this is going to be the overview. As you can see, when it loads, we're going to be on the overview. Backlinks is probably where you're going to want to spend the most amount of time. But if you kind of scroll through, you can see the referring domains from one year ago, or you can do all time. You see, as it's gone up, but in the past, there's a little drop, which isn't a bad thing. Might be removing some. There's been the same here. A lot of times when there's that many backlinks, usually someone is spamming a website. It happens if you're an SDO, you know how it is. Talking about some of the top anchors, categories, which is good. Overall, he is about you know, online marketing, SEO. CEO, affiliate marketing. So you can see from internet and telecom, business and industry, web services, SEO, advertising and marketing. This is good because that represents what his website is going to be about. If you see a website and it's just not related, you know, categories are not related to the website, usually it probably means there's a lot of spam going to it overall. We see referring domains by authority score. As you can expect for a lot of websites, the bigger ones are going to be in the bottom because they're easier to get. And as you go up, it's going to get lower and lower and lower as he has a few in the 81 to 90 authority score section. Now we're looking at backlink types. Most in general are going to be from text. There will be exceptions with some very few exceptions where websites have most backlinks linked from images. It doesn't happen all that much, but from what I've seen, most is going to be text. We have plenty of follow as well as no follow, very few sponsored and user generated content. We have our top level domain distribution, top countries, US looks good, and some other things you can kind of just skip through. And last but not least, we have top pages. This is great for a quick glance to see where are the majority of their backlinks going to. Usually the more domains you send to a specific article, the higher the chances are they want to rank it, obviously, right? It's pretty common sense. So with anchor text optimization, aside from his Diggity Marketing homepage, which is usually going to get the bulk of the backlinks for most regular pages, let's take a look at anchor text optimization, as I imagine he's ranking up high for that. Okay, Moz has the snippet, but there you go. Anchor tech optimization, uh, pretty much going to be number two if you're counting that as number one, which you know you can if you want. Under Neil Patel, then you got Semrush and so on and so forth. Even beating out some pretty big competitors there. Also, another one types of digital marketing. Let's look at best affiliate networks. That one I believe is pretty competitive. Blogging Wizard, Shopify, Influencer Marketing Hub, Business of Apps, Smart Blogger, Shout Me Loud, Neil Patel, and then Diggity Marketing. We have some very big competitors with these, so it's pretty good that he's there. I'm not, was that like 10, 9, around 8 or so, 7 or 8, depending on the snippet. Uh, no snippet there, but that's giving you an idea. Where are they sending a lot of their uh, backlinks to? Now, here comes the fun part, which you're going to like, I believe. So we have backlinks. Let's go here. In my previous video, I talked about this. I kind of connected it with the backlink gap tool. Backlink gap is all about saying which backlinks to your competitors have that you don't yet. And it'll kind of filter that through you. However, when you do that, it just gives you the top domain. So it's like if they have a backlink on HubSpot, it's just going to say HubSpot. However, if you dive deeper into this, you can see specifically where they're coming from. What I like about it, and when we're getting started, let's look at active, because if they're lost, we don't care about that. They don't have them anymore. So it's not going to be affecting ranking unless it was recently lost. It'll take some time for it to kind of fall off, so to speak. And we're looking for follow. If you want no follow, go for it. But majority of people want follow. They want that link juice. So with that being said, it's going to be sorted by the authority score right here. So some of the best are going to be right here. SEO.domains. We have Ahrefs. Not bad. That's a very powerful one. Let's delete this. And we can look at our anchor text as well. So this is just going straight to his blog. So if we just do find, we can see where it is. Okay. Saying thanks to all the people. Of course, he's on there because he's an awesome SEO. <laughs> anyway, let's go back over here. And let's take a look at some of the anchor text. Now, keep in mind, also, something I want to talk about is that usually the higher and the more powerful and the juicier the backlink, a lot of top pages aren't always going to be as quote unquote friendly about linking to commercial or affiliate content. So that's something you want to keep in mind as you're going through these. 
you want to see um, what is it linking to and what's the anchor text going to be, because that's going to give you some information about what they're probably going to tell you when you reach out to them. Aside from the fact you might have to pay money or maybe if you're doing some other type of exchange, whatever it's going to be, just do keep that in mind, because if you see someone has an awesome say like a really good like HubSpot right here, a good one right here, and you're expecting to send it to your review for this new product, it's probably not gonna happen. Like as you can see here, this goes straight to Diggity Marketing, just brand name, straight to the homepage, and then they're gonna be done with that. So how to boost your PBNs with topical relevance <clears throat> is going to, how you should start choosing anchor text starting now. Uh, so he has a couple there. The Affiliate Lab, that's going to be his product. Very solid product. Uh, white Hat Link Penalties. So high quality sites link. That would be Target. We got Link and Link. Uh, privacy Policy, the Search Initiative. Diggity Marketing, Diggity Marketing. So a lot of these are going to be brand, 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 brand. But that's good, though. That's how you really build up your authority. A lot of these could be from Help a Reporter Out. That's something to keep in mind. That's something I'd also look into. I've gotten a ton of links from them as well. Analyze your competition. So the different thing about this, okay, here we go. So Ask Corn is actually going to his best affiliate programs. Overall, that can be informational, but usually, obviously, there's going to be affiliate links in there. I would call that overall probably like an affiliate re related type of article, but let's take a look here. So comprehensive guide is going to be the, uh, let's see, let's type that in anchor text, compre. There we go. For a comprehensive guide of affiliate marketing, visit here. So here's the thing. Once we find websites that we want, we're simply looking for, what is this? Could this be a guest post? It looks like a guest post type of website, but contact us, right? Okay. And once it finally loaded, here is their beautiful Gmail email. No mention this in the email. So just make sure you follow their instructions. That's where you can reach out to them and see if they want to do maybe a guest post. Just going quickly off this website, it seems like it would be, yeah, like you got business, you got education, tech, fitness, insurance. This seems like the blog uh, guest post type of thing. How to maintain impressions. You can see there's going to be some similar ones based on the date five types of business signs and so on and so forth. So this could be one you can reach out to and ask them about guest posts and so on and so forth. That's how you would go about doing that, of course, okay? Next, let's keep moving, Quick Sprout, that's a good one. Server response time, nice target anchor. Let's see, Feed Buzzard, Black Diamond Games, that's just a blogspot.com, it's <laughs> funny, a few fund. That seems like a more spammy one. Uh, rank and rent on diggity marketing. So search engine journal, yet again, another really good one. Okay. I've seen that before. Let's see international. I believe I have a link from them. Yes. They're probably one you can certainly reach out to. And let's see where we can find writing services. Let's see if there's a contact. Right here we go. All right, perfect. Don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions or inquiries. Uh, that's going to be that. And it says for sponsored guest posts or press releases, you can click here. No, thank you. And page not found. So it looks like you're just going to be sending them an email if you wanted to reach out to them. Okay. Continuing on. And as we go down, like it says, the page authority is going to go down a little bit more. That's not a bad thing, you know, depending on what you're looking for, your budget is, you know, keep that in mind. The higher up it's going to be. Usually, overall, the better, the juicier link, the harder it's going to get overall, whether you have to do something specifically or pay for it. Like a lot of people don't want to, but the a lot of the competitive niches, you're just going to have to one way or another. Uh, name cheap. Once again, a really good one. Let's take a look at this. Once again, brand diggity marketing. Okay. I think it was this interviews or quotes. So this seems like this could have been one from helping a reporter out. This looks kind of like how it is. However, these are some just top SEOs here, which they might've just reached out to. That's the power of being really good at what you're doing, right? People will just reach out to you, look for a quote, and they'll be more than happy to send backlinks or give you a backlink and so on and so forth. So the interesting thing about Matt is he doesn't have as much commercial type of articles. He does on his website, which I've seen, you know, affiliate links and so on and so forth, but he has a lot of other affiliate sites that are much more, you know, like pretty much 90% affiliate content, especially if you've taken his course, you'll see what I mean. But this kind of, I don't want to go too deep into this. I think you get the idea, but this is something I really like is that once you find a competitor, what you can do is you can go to active, follow, 
probably you can do one also. This means that if someone say has 10 backlinks from Dropbox, they're just gonna show you one, which will make your life much easier to filter through. As you can see, there's over 3000 here. You can also really uh, add some filters to it. Like when it comes to the link placement, you have the platform and the language, which you're probably not gonna need to change around, but uh, I think you get the idea. And that's about it when it comes to using the backlink analytics, when it comes to SEMrush, I think that's some of the best things that you can do when it comes to spending your time looking for them. You can create a spreadsheet of them. You can also export them if you need to, but that's really gonna be up to you. For me personally, I just use like a Google doc and I run through and what I'll do is like, do I want to send a backlink to this website? I'll look at it, analyze it, see if it's got some good stats, if it's not too spammy or anything like that. And what I'll do is I'll put the information in and of course, like their email and I'll go through and I'll repeat the process, whether it be for one competitor, a lot of different competitors. And then from then on, I'll do my outreach. I'll send maybe five or so a day and then go from there and then just continue on with the process. And that's how you can pretty much get endless amounts of ideas when it comes to doing outreach and finding backlinks for your specific website based upon what your competitors are doing. And and this is only one website. Keep in mind, there's probably tons of them in your specific niche. Either way, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also test out SEMrush with their free trial with the link in the description. Thanks again for watching. My name is James and I'll see you in the next video.